Hello, and welcome back to Economics in One Lesson in the 21st Century, the channel where I show you a straightforward way to judge for yourself what other people are saying about economics. In the last video, we looked at firms, people and corporations which produce goods and services to sell. Here, we'll see how the one lesson helps us to understand limited companies, a very common type of firm. We'll look at the changes to everyone's net worth from the time a limited company is created to when it's wound up, and see how something called shareholder equity makes shares in the company valuable. Along the way, we'll see how the one lesson can turn a complex scenario into something that's both simple and intuitive. As always, here's a quick reminder of the one lesson. To understand economics, look at how each decision or action affects each person's net worth. A limited company, for the rest of this video I'll usually just say company, is a type of corporation. In the UK, its name ends with limited, or LTD for short, or it could end with PLC for a public limited company. Other countries have their own equivalents. A company has owners who might run it themselves or might appoint a board of directors to run it for them. A company is generally owned by more than one person and it doesn't have to be equally shared between them. Before modern computer record keeping, documents called share certificates would record how many shares the person with the certificate has. If you divide this number by the total number of shares in the company, it tells you what proportion of the company that person owns. Here, Bob owns 100 shares in Bob the Baker Limited, and there are only 100 shares in total, so he owns the whole company. In this example, Charlotte owns 280 shares, and Dom owns 70 shares in Charlotte's Cake Supplies Limited. There aren't any other shares, so Charlotte owns 80% of the company, and Dom owns 20%. A company isn't a tangible asset, so you might wonder what owning it, or part of it, means for an owner's balance sheet and net worth. The one lesson gives us a very simple answer, as we'll soon see. The most important points about a limited company for us when we're thinking about economics are 1. It has its own balance sheet and net worth. You may be surprised when you hear what its net worth is according to the one lesson. And 2. The owners aren't responsible for all of the company's liabilities if it becomes insolvent. We'll look at this situation in a future video. In this video, Bob sets up a limited company which he'll run entirely by himself to bake and sell cakes. We'll see what happens to people's balance sheets as the firm is created, trades, and is finally wound up. None of it's difficult to understand, but there's quite a lot of detail here, so we'll go through it slowly and carefully, showing each transaction twice, first as changes to the balance sheets, and then as a net worth diagram. Notice first that Bob owns a house, a car and a phone. He owes an apple to a neighbour and he has £500 of cash, a debt owed to him by the Bank of England. So his net worth is the house plus the car plus the phone minus an apple plus £500. Throughout the example, the first line of his net worth doesn't change. You only need to concentrate on the second line onwards. Bob now registers his company, Bob the Baker Limited with the government. This creates a new corporation with an empty balance sheet and zero net worth. The company's balance sheet looks a bit different from Bob's personal balance sheet, having a section with a big pink box labelled equity, but it's just another liability as we'll see in a minute. Bob decides that the company will have 100 shares all belonging to him. How much more is Bob able to buy as a result of owning these shares than he would be able to if he didn't have them? If you answered nothing, you'd be right. His net worth isn't affected by owning 100 shares in a company with no assets or liabilities. For the company to bake cakes, it will need some ingredients, but it doesn't have anything to buy them with yet. So Bob takes £100 of his £500 of cash and transfers it to the company. Providing a company with resources which it needs to operate is known as capitalising the company. At this point, Let's look at how the one lesson sees this situation. Bob has £100 less cash than before, but the company which he owns has a new £100 asset. If the company never did anything else and then closed, it would have to transfer that £100 back to Bob because he owns the company. 
There's a word for having to transfer some net worth to someone in future. A debt. So Bob is actually exchanging £100 of cash for a new debt of £100 owed to him by the company. This debt is called shareholder equity, or just equity for short. It's what would be left over if all of the company's other liabilities were paid. It appears in a pink box on the balance sheet to show that it's also a liability of the company. Let's now see that £100 debt appear in the company's equity and the matching £100 debt asset appearing on Bob's balance sheet. This example shows that equity is the reason why shares in a company have an economic value and all we needed to understand this was the one lesson. In our example, the company has 100 shares and now owes £100 to its shareholders, which works out as £1 per share. In a future video, I'll talk about why people might pay a different amount for a share in the company. Because Bob's net worth both decreased by £100 and increased by £100, it hasn't actually changed yet. What's the net worth of the company? It's zero still, it hasn't changed either. The company has assets of £100 cash, but also an equity liability of £100, and £100 minus £100 is zero. In fact, net worth is always zero for a solvent company. Some people use the terms equity and net worth interchangeably for a company, but we'll see later why that's misleading. Whenever a company's equity increases or decreases, it changes the net worths of its owners by exactly the same amount, which is what we should expect because equity is a debt owed to them by the company. Before moving on, here's the same transaction shown in the net worth diagram. Bob transfers £100 of cash to the company and in exchange the company creates a new £100 debt, the equity, owed to Bob. Notice how simple this transaction is when we look at it this way. As far as net worth is concerned, Bob is just swapping £100 for £100, so nothing has changed. Let's see what happens if we continue the simple scenario for Bob the Baker Limited. The company now buys flour, butter, sugar and eggs from Charlotte's Cake Supplies Limited for £50. When companies trade with each other, they often buy on credit, buy now, pay later. As we can see, the company gets a new liability of £50. If the diagram showed the balance sheet of Charlotte's Cake Supplies, we'd see the corresponding new debt asset of £50 appearing there. And the ingredients, tangible assets, are transferred from Charlotte's Cake Supplies to Bob the Baker. Charlotte's Cake Supplies also sends an invoice, traditionally a piece of paper, reminding the buyer to pay the new debt within, say, 30 days. Before looking at the net worth diagram, we need to think about the company's equity. It was £100 before, but what about now? Well, if it paid off its other debts, in this case the £50 owed to Charlotte's Cake Supplies, it would be left with £50 cash, plus the flour, butter, sugar and eggs. So that's its new equity, its new debt to Bob. Watch how the company's equity decreases by £50 and increases by the ingredients and how Bob's corresponding debt assets also decrease by £50 and increase by the ingredients. Remember that liabilities and debt assets always come in matching pairs. Because Bob's debt assets have changed, his net worth changes by exactly the same amount. All of these balance sheet changes happen as part of a single transaction. The company creates a new debt to Charlotte's Cake Supplies and receives the ingredients, and the equity debt owed to Bob changes at the same time. I haven't shown it here, but the transaction also includes a change in the equity debt owed by Charlotte's Cake Supplies to its owners. Whenever you see a net worth diagram for a company, look out for the way that each transfer of net worth out of the company immediately causes a matching transfer of net worth from the owners into the company as some of the equity debt is written off. And each transfer of net worth into the company immediately causes a matching transfer of net worth out of the company to its owners because the equity debt increases. This is why the company's net worth is always zero, at least as long as it remains solvent. All of the net worth changes from a company's business operations pass straight through the company to its owners. We haven't seen a blue arrow in net worth diagrams before, but it just represents the combined effect of two or more other arrows. I haven't found a better alternative when combining arrows of different colours. Here's a net worth diagram for this transaction. 
when Bob the Baker Limited creates a new debt of £50 to Charlotte's Cake Supplies, £50 of the equity debt to Bob is written off. And when the company receives the cake ingredients from the supplier, there are new debts owed to Bob because the company now owes him those ingredients. Now, Bob the Baker will use the ingredients to bake five cakes. It consumes the ingredients, but produces the cakes. Again, this changes the equity. Watch how the ingredients are removed from the equity and the cakes are added, with corresponding changes to Bob's debt assets and net worth. Looking at the net worth diagram, watch how the changes to net worth again pass straight through the company to Bob. Finally, the company sells the cakes to customers for £20 each. The cakes are transferred to the customers and the customers transfer £100 to the company. This decreases the equity by five cakes and increases it by £100, which again changes Bob's debt assets and net worth. The equity is now £150. Each share adds £1.50 to its owner's net worth. Before the company started operating, the equity was £100. So by producing cakes from ingredients, the company has made a £50 profit for its owner, Bob. In the net worth diagram, we can see that five cakes of net worth are transferred from Bob through the company to the customers, and £100 of net worth is transferred from the customers through the company to Bob. Suppose Bob is now offered a good job working for someone else and he decides to take it. He winds up his company, which means paying all the debts apart from the equity and distributing what's left to the owners. First, the company pays its £50 debts by transferring £50 of cash to Charlotte's Cake Supplies, which writes off the £50 debt in exchange. Bob the Baker's assets and liabilities both decrease by £50, so its equity doesn't change, and so neither does Bob's balance sheet. On the net worth diagram, we see the transfer of the cash in exchange for the write-off of the debt. From the point of view of net worth, nothing is happening because £50 is being swapped for £50. The company's only asset now is £150 of cash, and it doesn't have any liabilities apart from its equity. So it transfers the £150 of cash to Bob, which decreases its equity liability by £150, and of course decreases Bob's debt assets by £150. So overall, Bob's net worth doesn't change. The net worth diagram shows how the company transfers £150 of cash to Bob in exchange for Bob writing off the £150 of equity debt. Again, when we look at changes in net worth, nothing is happening here. At this point, the company is left with a completely empty balance sheet, just like it had when it was first created. It can now simply be dissolved so that it no longer exists. Bob is left with £50 more than he started with, and the rest of the world has £50 less, but has five cakes instead of just some ingredients. We've seen the effects of a company being created, trading, and being wound up. There's a lot of detail when we look at capitalisation, buying on credit, paying a debt, and winding up the business, but when we ignore transactions which don't actually change anyone's net worth, the whole scenario is reduced to just... Bob exchanges £50 for some cake ingredients. Through production, Bob converts the cake ingredients into five cakes. And Bob exchanges the cakes for £100. I think that shows the power of the one lesson to cut through complexity in economics. Let's just look at a few other common situations which affect a company's equity. We'll use Charlotte's Cake Supplies as an example. First, if the company pays its employee, Alice, £2,000, its equity is reduced by £2,000. So Charlotte's net worth is reduced by £1,600 and Dom's net worth is reduced by £400. In summary, the owners have paid Alice £2,000 of their personal net worths. Next, suppose a company has to pay £4,000 of tax. This reduces the equity by £4,000 which reduces Charlotte's net worth by £3,200 and Dom's by £800. The owners have paid £4,000 of their net worth to the government. This is why some people say there's no such thing as a tax on corporations. It always affects a real person's net worth. 
If Charlotte's Cake Supplies invests £100,000 on five vans for delivering its products, its equity increases by five vans and decreases by £100,000. Charlotte's net worth increases by four vans and decreases by £80,000. And Dom's net worth increases by one van and decreases by £20,000. The owners have spent £100,000 of their net worth on five vans of net worth. Finally, if the company pays a dividend of 50 pence per share to its owners, it pays £140 to Charlotte and £35 to Dom. The company's equity is reduced by £175, but of course Charlotte's and Dom's net worths don't change overall because they received a dividend. Basically, the company has paid them some of the equity debt which it owed to them, and as far as net worth is concerned, nothing has actually happened. So, as we've already seen, every time a company's assets and liabilities change in any way, its equity immediately changes too, which flows straight through to the net worths of its shareholders. As long as a company is solvent, then from the point of view of net worth, it's as though the company doesn't exist and the shareholders are just acting in their own capacity. We'll look at what happens when a company becomes insolvent in a future video. As we've seen, whatever would be left if a company paid its liabilities is called equity and is best thought of as a constantly changing debt owed to its shareholders. A solvent company has zero net worth. This is very important and I want you to understand it because it's easy to be misled if you aren't careful. There are two honest ways to think about the net worths of a company and its owners and then there's a common way. One honest way is what we've done to say that equity is a debt and so it's added to the shareholders net worths and subtracted from the company's net worth. A less good but still honest way is to say that equity is not a debt and so the company's net worth equals its equity but that shares add nothing to the shareholders' net worths until the company is finally wound up and its net worth is transferred to the shareholders. A misleading, but sadly all too common way, is again to say that equity is not a debt, so it doesn't reduce a company's net worth, but that each share increases its owner's net worth by the current share price. In our earlier example, where Bob had just set up his company, and transferred £100 of cash to it, people might be willing and able to pay Bob 90 pence for a share. Even if Bob didn't sell any shares, the misleading approach implies that £90 of net worth has appeared from nowhere simply because people would pay Bob some money for some shares if he was willing to sell them. It ignores the reason why owning part of the company is something that people would be prepared to pay for. Remember this point when you hear people talk about the wealth effect which is simply about trying to increase share prices to make people feel wealthier. As we've seen in previous videos, if there are no new tangible assets in the world, the whole world's net worth can't have increased. So, that was another quite long and detailed video, but I think it's always worthwhile to see how another apparently complicated piece in the jigsaw of the economy can be understood as simply the creation, destruction, transfer and exchange of net worth. Many transactions in the economy are just exchanging one form of net worth for an equal amount of another form of net worth. We've seen that a limited company's shareholder equity is what's left over after all other liabilities have been paid. It's a constantly changing debt owed to the shareholders and it's the reason why shares are economically valuable. As long as a company is solvent, all of the changes to its balance sheet immediately flow through the company via its equity debt to the net worths of the owners. Finally, we've seen that the so-called wealth effect is an illusion. It doesn't matter if people are prepared to pay more for a financial asset. It has no effect whatsoever on the world's net worth. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you to understand economics a bit better. If it did, please do share it. I really want as many people as possible to be in a strong position to question what they're told in the media and in classrooms. As always, please leave any feedback or questions in the comments. I'd like to know whether you find the content clear and whether the length of the videos is okay. Originally, I was hoping to make them five to 10 minutes each. If there are any economists watching, I'd love to know what you make of the one lesson approach, which is so different from how economics is normally presented. 
feel free to challenge me on anything I've said. I'd be very happy to discuss it. Finally, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who's subscribed on BitChute or YouTube. Knowing that you're taking an interest in my content helps me to stay motivated when I'm stuck trying to find a good way to illustrate an idea. I'll see you soon for more economics in one lesson in the 21st century. Thank you.